So um, we got home last night and none of us had eaten dinner. So we, we were trying to figure out like, oh, where should we go eat? And, you know, we thought about all of our favorite Korean restaurants. I, um, and he said, well, I don't want Korean food. That's all I've been eating for the last two years. <laughs> and he's like, I want a burger or pizza and, <laughs> or something, you know. He had, as you know, he had uh, gone back and forth between the labor camp and hospital multiple times in the last two years. So I think um, because he had recovered some in the hospital, I think he was in better shape than we had expected because I think he was in not good shape at all just two months ago. He was really suffering in a lot of pain. We had a just late night eating pizza and, you know, he had, he's a storyteller to begin with. I mean, that's what he does. He holds court and he just regales people with like funny stories and that's just who he is as, as a person to begin with. So you could tell he was so hungry for that. I mean, as you can imagine, he was cut off from all of that for two years. Amazing, amazing. Um, there are no words, just the relief um, and joy, because we just had no idea what kind of condition we were going to find him in. Um, so just tremendous relief at that he seemed you know, I don't know what it's going to be like going forward, um, and that I don't know if he, he knows. Um, maybe there's going to be, I think, a lot of, you know, emotional stress and other things that he's going to have to deal with. For the, you know, he spent two years as a prisoner in North Korea at a labor camp. Um, so I don't know what that's going to look like for him, but I am thankful that, um, you know, for now he seems to be doing remarkably well. He's, he's in good spirits.